See who gets to come up to the board? Five, six. Okay, up at the board, I've got sine theta minus one over cosine squared theta. We super briefly started it yesterday, and in fact, what we started wasn't correct because I wrote it backwards. Okay, now, what we talked about yesterday was the Pythagorean identities, which is what we're going to use. Does it, what, I, what I skipped over because we had zero time, why were we trying to change cosine squared into one minus sine squared? Like, that was probably a much bigger qu uh, question to answer than I should have probably started with that rather than just immediately telling you that we're going to change cosine squared into 1 minus sine squared. So if you want, while, while they're pondering, why don't you put like an equal sign and write sine of theta minus 1 over 1 minus sine squared theta. It's, a, it's actually a very easy answer, but I just didn't know if any buddy would be able to word it or whatever. Um, it's not wrong. You're, I mean, like, you're right. You basically plug zero, you plug zero, or pi halves in, and you get divided by zero, so you have to do something. So that's absolutely correct, too. One minus sine squared theta. Oh, you were trying to erase. Yep. No, nope, hit the marker. Yep. There you go. Um, what were you frequently told last year to do when you ever you had a tangent in an equation? Change everything into sines and cosines to see how they're compatible. That is absolutely a common method for working with problems. You were taught it last year because you need to use it in problems this year. So now that we've got sine of theta minus 1 over 1 minus sine squared theta, does anybody see what to do? Yeah? Not a bad thought. Actually, that's 100% what you can do. Uh, it will work out exactly the same. That sine squared will turn out to be 1, and so we'd get 1 minus 1, which is still 0. So we haven't, we haven't actually done any or canceled out anything to be able to re-plug in pi halves. Okay, maybe on the left side over here, away from the problem, I'll have you write something else. We're going to write a fraction that says x minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, if we have x minus 1 over 1 minus x squared, what would you think of trying? The bottom, my guess is a lot of you just automatically know the bottom is 1 plus x, 1 minus x. That's the same thing with the signs. So the fact that the top is a regular sign, but the bottom is sine squared, they're different types. The bottom of the fraction can be factored into 1 plus sine of theta times 1 minus sine of theta. Hmm. Do I write that down? That'd be great. Should I put it like in parentheses that are times each other? Or? Definitely. Yeah, like yeah, no, you're doing great. Oh, not squared. Oh, yeah, right. not, not squared anymore. How Did do you erase on this thing? Uh, you're, you can do two fingers, palm, depends on how big you want it. Did you guys have to factor trig last year? I feel like you did. But was it a case of you were just told to factor it and you didn't naturally do it within a problem? Okay. So what you're going to run into this year is um, you have to try to almost view the trig ones as x's because that's frequently how you're going to be able to do the factoring. So. <clears throat> The x minus 1 over 1 minus x squared on the left there is exactly what we had, but it was sine of theta. And so it, in your head, you have to treat them the same because they get factored the same. And now that we have sine minus 1 
And one of the factors on the bottom is one minus sign. Do you remember what happens when we cancel factors that are reversed? I feel like we had one the other day. Yes. So we can cancel those two. Uh, the negative one can be wherever you want. Most people just put it on the top. One plus sign. So it works for us because we were able to cancel something out. And the item that we canceled gave an answer of zero on the bottom. So now that we have it simplified, we can plug pi halves back in. Uh, yeah. Yep, because sine of pi halves is one, so it'd be negative one over one plus one. And I, I know once you once you see what to do, it's not bad. Um, the hardest part for most of you is just like even thinking of trying that method. So the squared is what made me think of it. So squared gives us two options. One, Pythagorean identities. Two, factor. And when it was first written as just cosine squared, well, there's nothing to factor there, so it's not like we really have much of a choice. And I only even thought of factoring it because the top was sine minus one. For the people who came back from the quiz, uh, I can't even remember if I said this before you came back, but definitely, I'll wait. We shouldn't try to wing any quizzes and tests. We have to get prepared for them. Okay, next page. This is exactly the same idea. Uh, actually, let's split this one up. Let's have these first two rows do A, middle two rows do B, last two rows do C, and I will let, you're this row. I will let each group of rows determine who is their representative to go up and put the work. Uh, one, two, three, whatever. You're A. Sure. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I don't even know the I don't even know the right word. I guess it is columns, but yeah, because rows are this way, aren't they? Thanks. I don't know. I'm just saying these two. What's the first thing you should try to think of doing? Put everything into terms of sine and cosine. See how things are compatible. Things may cancel, things may combine. That's what your goal is to try to do.
Ooh, all right, we got a volunteer ready. What? Absolutely. Yeah, it's not always a uh, poem. There we go. All right. Okay, excellent. C is good. We need somebody for A. Didn't you guys? Didn't a bunch of you do the problem together somewhat? You have different answers, and you. Well, that's good. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to fit all the work. Uh, your palm. It has to, it senses a flat surface. I don't know why they. I, I don't know why they included a. They should have just included an actual eraser. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like it should be. Uh, I would expect a lot of people to be able to do it in their head, so you can just go right to the answer. Nice. B is good. So A still has no agreement? They're all agreed. I got different answers. 
what is the diff like? Are, where are you guys getting different answers from? Is it just like evaluating uh, pi halves, or is it simplifying differently? I don't know which way to do it because I did it like that, and yep. I just plugged in pi over two for yep. each of them. It's just zero, zero, zero. Sorry, one, and then it's on top is zero. Okay. Over one is zero. Uh, yep. But then, is, can I literally just write it like that, and then I can plug in from there? Yep. Uh, the numerator for a. The numerator for a. You can write it multiple ways. Um, you, you have to do a palm or a flat surface somehow. There you go. Oh shoot. Well, if it's just your finger, it recognizes it as a pen. Oh, so two cosine squared should be negative sine squared plus one. Uh, okay. Uh, that would also be a two right there, though. Uh, nothing. Oh, did you cancel? Yeah, I canceled. Can't the cancel. Oh. Uh, you can only cancel with if there's a factor or a multiplier of sign. You can't cancel from an individual. Oh, okay. Yeah, because otherwise you can write it down. Yes. Okay. All three of these, for the most part, changing everything to sines and cosines is supposed to make it quicker. Um, and it generally is only going to make it quicker if things cancel out, you know. You just removed things to do. So like on this one, you basically got rid of a sign, so there was only one calculation to do. But you 100% would get the correct answer if you just plugged it in from the start. None of these, the factor affected the answer. The, the whole goal of this is just to show you and remind you to how to work with trig. So like say this first one, if you knew how to find cosine and cotangent, you could have just put it in right away and got the answer. If you do, uh, honestly, sine and cosecant, you're supposed to kind of recognize their reciprocals, and so they immediately turn to one. But still, even if you plugged it in, sine and cosecant, their answers were reciprocals, so their answers would have canceled with each other out to make a one. And so it would work out the same way, no matter how you did it, actually. Um, it's just basically refreshing you on using trig. Until we get to the bottom of the page. That is different. No, not that page. Sorry, that page. <laughs> yeah, those three empty boxes are not mind-breaking and, and mind-blowing here. So, okay, the special trig limits get used relatively frequently, but I think only on purpose. These aren't like naturally occurring all the time, so it's not like you're just gonna have them as part of, um, you know, if, when you learn natural logs and you're told that natural logs occur in nature a lot, like that's the whole point of E, the natural number. Um, whether it's whether it's the rate at which petals bloom out of plants, because a lot of them go at a ratio of E. Um, whether it's uh, radioactive carbon dating, uh, decibels, sound levels. Natural log is just part of those, or like the Richter scale, right? It's just it's part of all those. These aren't ones that you can figure out by hand. These were figured out with the Swiss theorem that we don't have to do. And so what, what's going to happen is you're going to have versions of these two, they just call them special trig limits because you're given them all the time. It's not because they occur all the time. You're just going to see these two frequently in problems we have. So 
if you have the limit as x approaches theta, if you have the limit as theta approaches zero of sine of theta over theta, which this should look familiar because that was on your quiz. The part that I need to emphasize, um, x and theta, they just stand for something, right? Like any random number? So the part that matters about this formula is that whatever is on the sine function has to be the exact same on the bottom for this trig limit to work. Uh, we're not going to do any of these tables, FYI. Uh, I don't think this is a benefit or help other than I put it on your quiz. The questions you're going to get, these are going to have different numbers. Probably the one at the bottom. Yep. Let's just do that one together. And it'll be easier to show you the example while we do it together. Can we get done at five? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we might get it done. First of all, the three. I am going to bring that up front because it has no part in this problem, other than the final answer. So sine of five theta over two times theta. On the denominator, the two gets the multiplier. I could actually bring up front if I wanted to because this is just a multiplier, right? Like we had our limit properties, and if you have a multiplier, you can just bring it up front. This is technically a multiplier of one half because you've got a two on the bottom of the fraction. And so I can bring that two up. And, and rewrite the problem like that. Are we okay with that? I guess that, that's the first part. The maybe? I don't see why. Oh, okay. That's a very different answer. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're confused why I did that? That's fine. That's okay. But all I'm worried about is that if you guys are okay thinking that's correct. Because it is. It is correct. But I need you guys to be okay with it. Because it's just a multiplier. And you can do whatever you want with multiplier. Can I take that drive up? How come? It's, like it's the angle, yeah. You guys specifically learned all these different formulas last year on how to change angle signs. Like, you had the uh, sum of two angles, the half angle, the double angle. You had all those different identities. I 100% do not want to do that on there because it makes it so much worse. But the important thing to know is you cannot change the number in an angle. You can change the number on the bottom because it's just, it's not part of trig. It's just a, a number that's there. So what we're going to do, our special trig limit only works if this number and this number are the same. So how can I make them the same? True, but I can't just randomly put a 5 in. I mean, that's actually what we're going to do, but we can't just randomly do it. How could I get a 5 on the bottom? Multiply top and bottom by the same number. And then the 5 on the bottom, well, I wanted that there, so I'm going to leave it there. The 5 on the top, I'll bring out front with the others. So the front is 15 halves. Oh, this actually is not bad at all. Just wait. This feels like it's going to be horrible. It is not. Now that I have the same thing on both of these, this automatically can be replaced with what? Including the limit, just the whole thing. Up at the top of your page. It says whenever you have the limit as theta going to zero of sine of theta over theta, the answer is one. 
And so once we had these be the same info, it's one. So my final answer is 15 hands. They actually worked very easy. Has anybody, I know we only have two minutes left, but did anybody see the shortcut immediately now that I wrote the answer? Maybe? Um, so if this is a multiple choice question on the AP test. Three times five divided by two. <laughs> on the AP test, on the multiple choice. On our test, you gotta show this work. And I, if this was ever a free response, you'd have to show the work. But no, it does not work for those. It only works for this one. The sign one is so much easier. So we'll stop there. We'll start with that one tomorrow.